Matt Rimac, founder of Rimac and now CEO of Bugatti Rimac. Matt Rimac went from war refugee to bullied teenager to an electronics whiz winning world records. And as of right now, CEO of his own electric supercar company, Bugatti Rimac, backed up by major players like Porsche. But how did this all happen? Well, let's find out. Because you're watching Quattro Cam. My name is Alex and you're watching is Matt Rimac. The future. The story of Matty Rimac plays out like a Hollywood film. It is filled with hurdle after hurdle. A series of unlikely events that all come together to create something truly unbelievable. You see, Matty was born in Yugoslavia, more specifically Bosnia and Herzegovina in 1988. If the name Yugoslavia means very little to you, that is because it no longer exists. Various forces were at play here, but the separation of the country led to the forming of six nations. Croatia, Montenegro, Serbia, Slovenia, Bosnia and Herzegovina and North. Macedonia. As you might expect, a single nation splitting into six individual and diverse nations had some confrontation. This led to Mate and his family leaving the region when he was just three years old. They moved and settled down in Frankfurt, Germany for nine years before returning to modern-day Croatia. Mate was not great academically at all and struggled with bullying due to his accent. Thankfully for our story, a former teacher called mentor would encourage Mate to take up electronics. Despite Mate's reluctance and very low hopes, he would go on to win multiple electronics fairs from school to national level. He wasn't just a gifted builder, he was also an inventor. In 2005, Mate built a device that replaced a computer's keyboard and mouse with a glove, which he called the eye glove. Shortly after, he invented a rear view mirror system for avoiding a vehicle's blind spot, which won an award at an international trade fair in 2006. At age 17, Mate applied for two international patents for his inventions and went on to win numerous international awards. In just 17 short years, Mate had gone from a struggling high schooler with an unstable past to a decorated engineer. Mate Mate would go on to attend the Vienna University of Applied Science from 2007, obtaining a bachelor's degree in entrepreneurial management in 2010, something that would become very handy in the future. This brings us to Mate's introduction to the world of racing. You see, Mate had a dream of being a racing driver, but with little money, he needed a cheap but capable car. He settled on the BMW 323i and got to racing. His first few races went well, but shortly after, his engine exploded. Along with his hopes and dreams, sat at his parents' garage, deciding if he wanted to pay for a costly new engine. Mate had a thought. If we're going to change the engine, why not do something truly outrageous? With this thought fresh in his mind, Mate decided to use his electronics experience to make the BMW electric. Looking to his boyhood hero Nikola Tesla for inspiration, Mate set about converting his BMW into his first electric car. Despite ridicule from his peers and the racing community, Mate pushed ahead with his electric vision after many long nights and constant improvements, including seven separate versions of the car. Mate had the finished article. Thanks to his homemade alterations, the electric BMW started to win races and people began to whisper. Mate even set some FIA and Guinness world records, including the fastest quarter mile by an electric car with an impressive 11.85 seconds, faster than an F82 BMW M4. To put this into perspective, Reva at the time had something called the G-Wiz and it was horrendous. It was small, funny looking and slow. It had just 17 horsepower and a blistering 0-60 to 60 of never. The mighty G-Wiz would struggle to top 50 miles per hour. Even if it hit the quarter mile flat out, it would still take 18 seconds to complete it. And remember, that is some 6 seconds slower than Mate's 3 Series from a standing start. At just 18 years old, Mate was already challenging and beating established car companies all on his own. Mate was of course pretty happy with what he had achieved, and by age 21, he founded what would later become Rimac Automobile, originally converting customers' existing combustion engine cars to electric ones. Mate had a much bigger dream in his sites. He was also younger than another prominent automotive inventor, who we have covered recently, the mighty Christian von Koenigsegg. Mate was in a very special league indeed, but it wasn't until 2011 when things really started to get moving. Just a year before this in 2010, Mate met Adriano Mudri, who was a designer at General Motors. Mate proposed to Adriano that they develop an electric supercar together, something Adriano was more than happy to do, and they began working on a concept as a paper exercise. Mate was a university student at the time, while Adriano was working for GM, so both of them worked on the project in their downtime, Mate on the technology and Adriano on the design. By the end of 2010, they had the first renders, technical specs and targets ready. Whilst this was happening, Mate's BMW was still getting him a lot of attention. One fellow Croatian who saw Mate's success happened to work for a prominent Middle Eastern royal family. He asked Mate for information on the car, which Mate was happy to provide. This actually led to the royal family placing two orders. There was one rather large issue, however. Mate had no company as such, no employees and no money. He had to turn down the orders and that was the end of Rimac Automobile. 
or was it? The family offered to invest in Mate's efforts to enable him to build the car. And with this fresh injection of cash, Mate began hiring employees to bring the cars to life. However, it was a short-lived affair. The Will family gave Mate an ultimatum shortly after. Move the company to the Middle East or they would stop funding. Mate was already struggling to pay salaries of rent and suppliers while trying to build the first prototype of the Concept 1 with an inexperienced team. With his back against the wall, desperately needing the investor's money, Mate had to make a call. Option 1. Move the company to the Middle East. Or option 2. Risk losing it entirely. Mate chose option 3. He bet on himself. Mate ended the partnership and he kept Rimac where it belonged. He would later go on to say, it was the best thing he'd ever done, as this move allowed him to keep the company in Croatia. However, this now left Mate with no other choice but to find engineering work for the struggling young company as a revenue stream. While trying to keep the development of the car going, Mate started to work for other automotive companies to develop batteries, electric powertrain systems, or full vehicles as a means of survival, while at the same time building their own supercar and trying to find investors to fund bringing their car to the market. There is one huge thing to remember about Mate. He is Croatian to the core. If he's doing anything, he's doing it in Croatia, a country with no automotive muscle at all. This is why he was so determined to keep Rimac where it belonged. He even asked the University for Mechanical Engineering in Zagreb for help to develop the car, but was told by a professor that it was impossible to build a car in Croatia and that he should just give up. But this is Mate Rimac, remember. And in 2011, the Rimac Concept 1 was unveiled at the Frankfurt Motor Show. The city he had called home for nine years, a fitting place to showcase what you could do if you just never give up. One thing we're never going to give up asking you is if you've liked the video, to give it a like. And whilst you're here, why not subscribe to the channel? It really helps us out and it's completely free to you. So things are looking up for Mate and Rimac. After years of struggling to survive, battling to put Croatia and Rimac on the map, money started to flow from the likes of Porsche, Hyundai and Kia, some of the largest car brands in the world. In 2018, Rimac showcased the C2, or as most of us know it, the Nevera, the name given to a quick, sudden and mighty Mediterranean storm that races across the open sea off Croatia. A Nevera is extremely powerful and charged by lightning. The Nevera is mind-blowing, regardless of the stats you choose to look at. It has 1,914 horsepower, 2,360 newton meters of torque, 0 to 60 in 1.8 seconds, 0 to 180 miles per hour in 9.2 seconds, quarter of a mile in 8.62 seconds, and a top speed of 256 miles per hour. From only the second production car Rimac has ever made. It's not just pure numbers either, there's some serious technology in this car. Rimac's intelligent all-wheel torque vectoring system measures torque 100 times a second to ensure each electric motor is delivering power where it is needed most. All this power is held in place by the carbon fiber monocoque, where the battery is part of the chassis, aiding with its strength. The technology is so good, Koenigsegg uses Rimac batteries in the Regera. Because why develop your own batteries when you can just buy the best? You can check out that Koenigsegg video in just a second. But all of what I've been talking about leads us to the present day. Mate, now CEO of Bugatti Rimac, has the world at his feet. He is truly the king of electricity, the master of his craft, and a true automotive genius, standing shoulder to shoulder with the greats at just 35 years old. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some of our other content? And if you haven't already, make sure you've liked this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this.